The President, please be seated. The trial chamber is now back in session. I would like to give the floor to the co-prosecutor to continue his line of questioning to the expert Dr. Craig Edison. The floor is yours, co-prosecutor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, before I do commence, recommence, I've been reminded uh, to inform uh, the Chamber and all parties that in relation to the international armed conflict documents I advised the Chamber about earlier on, there will be booklets provided to all parties for their consideration in the same manner in which we provided booklets of photographs for Phnom Penh S21, uh, but those obviously won't be distributed today. Returning Dr. Etchison to the Standing Committee, um, are you able to Tell us how many meeting minutes of the Standing Committee survive. My recollection, Mr. Prosecutor, is that the Office of the Co-Prosecutors is in possession of approximately 20 different meeting minutes of the Standing Committee, du comité permanent, which almost certainly comprise a small portion of the total number. Ce qui représente très certainement une petite partie du total. Just on that last point, help Question. us with um, your, Alors, what led you to your conclusion that it, dire ce qui vous fait it was almost certainly a, a small number of the the meetings that took place. Une petite partie seulement des réunions qui ont effectivement eu lieu. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. Oui. The selection of standing committee meeting minutes that we have Les comes from a relatively compressed period of time during the democratic Kampuchea regime. De temps relativement courte principally in late 1975 and the first half of 1976. The dates on some of these meeting minutes suggest that the Standing Committee met rather frequently on some occasions twice in a single day to confer on different topics. Discuter de différents sujets. There is no reason to believe that the Standing Committee did not continue through the remainder of the tenure of Democratic Kampuchea to meet on a similarly frequent schedule. But due to the exigencies of war, the policies of extreme secrecy of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, and a determined effort at document and archive destruction prior to their evacuation of Phnom Penh pour détruire les archives avant les évacuations de Phnom Penh les 6 et 7 juin 1979 il semble que la plus grande partie de ces documents soient perdus thank you merci in the light of the ruling earlier on, I don't propose to go through with you the Standing Committee meeting minutes individually. But are you able to help us in perhaps more general terms who attended these meetings, whether they were members of the Standing Committee only, or others outside the Standing Committee, in general what issues were discussed, what guidance may have been given. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. Standing Committee meetings were always 
attended Aux réunions du comité by at least two toujours au moins and deux usually more et en général, members of the standing committee. Although several members of the standing committee had responsibilities as zone secretaries, Plusieurs membres du comité permettent aussi and thus secrétaire de zone, they were frequently away from Phnom Penh and infrequently attended the meetings. Et participé peu fréquemment aux réunions du comité. Q Sampan Mais Q Sampan was not a member of the standing committee. N'était pas membre du comité. But based on the selection of standing committee meeting minutes we have, he usually attended. On peut dire que, en général, il assistait. If I recall correctly, si je me in fact, bien, only Nguyen Chea attended standing committee meetings more often Nguyen than Chia Q Sampan. Nguyen Chea a assisté aux réunions du comité permanent du PCK plus souvent que Q Sampan. Frequently, senior cadre, souvent des cadres supérieurs, from the zones, from ministries, des zones, des ministères, and or from military units, ou would be invited to attend standing committee meetings, à ces réunions, to report on the situation, de compte de la situation and to receive instructions from the standing de recevoir committee. Des instructions de la part du comité. The range of topics discussed la gamme in des the standing committee meeting minutes that we have et, et que l'on retrouve dans les is ubiquitous. Et it covers varié, all cela imaginable varié. topics Cela couvre tous les sujets on imaginables. politics, organization, politique, organisation, economics, military and security affairs, militaire, sécurité, international politics, politique internationale, in short, autrement dit, the entire range of topics la gamme that a des top sujets governmental executive would have to deal with on a daily basis, exécutif. the affairs of the entire nation and people. Traite normalement dans le cadre une nation. Thank you. Question. I would like you to Merci, je discuss, as I list them, que, the euh, different euh, methods by which the standing committee communicated le comité with the subordinate units avec, euh, around Cambodia and within the party. Sur le, sur le et uh, firstly, can I ask you please to discuss the directives that were sent out to all echelons from the Standing Committee? And perhaps you may refer to two documents in particular. Document number 36 on your index from Office 870 on the 1st of January 1979, entitled Announcement of Steady and Absolute Combat, combat Against the Yuan Enemy, and Document 138, again from Office 870, two days later, the 3rd of January 1979, entitled Advice by 870. Et qui and, Mr. President, I, in the light of discussions today, I do not propose to read the ERN references. So that's document 36 and document 138 from your list, Dr. Edison, in relation to directives sent from the Standing Committee. Il s'agit de directives envoyées par le comité permanent. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. Réponse oui, Monsieur le Coprocureur. These two documents were issued by Office 870 at a time when Democratic Kampuchea was entering an extremely grave crisis. The first document dated 1 January 1979 was issued approximately one week after Vietnamese forces had launched a massive invasion of Democratic Kampuchea 
using armored elements and air power, and they were very quickly overwhelming the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea all along the shared border between Cambodia and Vietnam. By January 1st, I believe it had become clear to the leadership that they may indeed lose Phnom Penh and have to retreat into guerrilla warfare, but they were not yet admitting this to their cadre and their people, even though they appeared to be taking preliminary measures for just such an eventuality. This particular document appears to have been distributed to all units of organization in Democratic Kampuchea and in the Communist Party of Kampuchea, and it calls on the local population, civilians, to take up guerrilla warfare against the invading Vietnamese forces. The second document that you mentioned, Pour le deuxième document, issued on 3 January 1979, qui date du 3 janvier, two days 19, after the first one, deux jours plus tard, calls on democratic Kampuchea forces to continue to resist the invading Vietnamese forces, and also directly calls for forces to begin the retreat into previously prepared guerrilla bases in the Northwest. This document, too, appears to have been distributed to all organizational units of Democratic Kampuchea and the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Kampuchea. Thank you. Can I ask whether, in your research, you have identified any other similar directives? And by similar, I mean directives that came from the Standing Committee and were addressed to all echelons. These kinds of documents are relatively rare in the surviving archives. However, there are a number of examples we could cite that do appear to have received wide circulation, certainly within the upper echelons of the party apparatus, if not to all units. And I would cite as a prime example of that, a document that we have previously discussed, dated 30 March 1976, entitled Decision of the Central Committee regarding a number of matters, which, although it was issued in the name of the Central Committee appears to me to be a product, in fact, of the Standing Committee. If it pleases the Court, we can give the ERN for that document again. Maybe the number in the list, Judge Laverne says. Uh, this is number 37 on the index E55.1. Thank you. Merci. Moving on to discuss the other methods by which the Standing Committee 
communicated with its subordinate units. Avec, uh, les Could you please, Dr. Etchison, discuss the sessions at the party training school? Me dire en quoi consistaient les sessions de forme, les sessions qui avaient lieu à l'école de formation du parti. From your knowledge. Qu'en savez-vous? The party training school, Mr. Prosecutor, was a venue where cadre of the Communist Party of Kampuchea were indoctrinated with what was known as the line, which might be translated into ordinary language as the policies of the party and the government of democratic Kampuchea. These sessions were held regularly for cadre from all units of organization in the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Not just at the central level, but also involving cadre from the zones, the sectors. Des secteurs, the districts, des districts, and so on, etc. so that everyone de sorte que could be appraised of the current policy lines être of, the poli uh, of the party de la and the government. Du parti et de la ligne du These sessions were often led et and taught by Nguyen Chia et and or Chia Q Sampan. Moving on to the Communist Party of Kampuchea rallies held in Phnom Penh at, at the sports stadium. Could you perhaps discuss these as a method by which the standing committee communicated with the lower echelons? Communication entre le comité permanent et les autres échelons. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. Oui. The stadium rallies that were organized Des by the party center appeared to perform stade, a similar function que ces to that une of the party similaire school, à celle de but on du parti, a larger scale, mais sur une échelle plus large. very large groups stadium-sized groups of cadre or combatants or cadre and combatants would be gathered together and lectured on the achievements and goals of the revolution and the policies of the party. This was also a regular occurrence. Et cela aussi était euh, and quelque chose qui se passait régulièrement. In fact, I believe on the case file Et je crois que dans there le is dossier, some film footage il y a même of some of these rallies euh, des images showing filmées that they were often attended by the entire standing committee, dont il many of whom qui would proceed to address the rallies on various topics. Régulièrement dans son entier et parler de sujets divers. Thank you. Moving Question. on to another way in which the Standing Merci. Committee communicated de the line par to its subordinate units, units. I'd like you to, Dr. Etchison, talk about the state radio of Democratic Kampuchea. De la radio du and perhaps, if you could discuss this in conjunction with document 55 on your index, which is entitled Standing Committee Minutes of Meeting of Propaganda Work, 8th of March, 1976. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. Réponse. Oui. This document 
dated 8 March 1976, is the minutes of a standing committee meeting, which is titled Minutes of Meeting on Propaganda Work. It records the instructions of the party center to the organization's propaganda organs on how they should popularize, uh, disseminate information about the purported election to be held in Democratic Kampuchea on 20 March. 1976, and it includes detailed instructions on the precise content that these messages should contain, the time that they should be disseminated, and the form in which they should be disseminated, whether on the radio or through face-to-face -face meetings organized in various locales. Excusez-moi. Est-ce qu'on pourrait demander à avoir chaque fois qu'on parle d'un document la note de bas de page pour nous permettre de le retrouver plus rapidement Merci. Notamment ce dernier document dont vous venez de parler sur l'expert. Merci. Merci. The footnote in the table to hand, the exercise would be carried out just as easily by the defence as by the co prosecutors. And unless the witness can help us straight away, it would entail us doing exactly the same job as requested by the defence. I'm sorry, it would, would require the defence to do exactly what we would do. The President, uh, the, Mr. Atchison, are you able to also tell us Atchison, the footnotes reference number? Mr. President, I believe that this document is cited in the report, uh, but I do not have an easy way to find that section. Um, if uh, the court so desires, I could take whatever time is necessary to locate it in the document. For the assistance of all parties, we have found using a very simple word search on the PDF document at footnote 86. All the parties need do is to conduct a word search on a PDF document, and that footnote will come up, or the multiple footnotes would come up. Because, as um, my colleague reminds me, some of the references appear multiple times in multiple footnotes. For example, this one also appears at footnote 92. The President, uh, the co-prosecutor, you can proceed uh, further. Thank you, Mr. President. Dr. Etchison, you have already discussed several issues of the DK periodical revolutionary flag. And I'd like to ask you some questions more generally. Do you have any opinion on how widely this magazine was read in Democratic Kampuchea? To whom was it distributed? Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. My understanding is that the magazine 
or journal, Revolutionary Flag, was designed to be read by all full rights members of the party, uh, without exception. And in fact, studying the information that was contained in Revolutionary Flag was not optional for a party member. I seem to recall having read in S21 Confessions where Cadre confessed to having committed treasonous behavior for failing to distribute revolutionary flag issues to the Cadre under their command. Perhaps I can ask you to illustrate my next question by two editions of Revolutionary Flag. And the question is how the Standing Committee may have used the magazine as a political training aid or as a way in which the political line was disseminated, disseminated across the country. The two editions I'm concerned with are document 46 in your index, a revolutionary flag magazine from June 1977, and document 48, a revolutionary flag special edition of December 1977 to January 1978. I wonder if you could assist us on that question, please, Dr. Escherson. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. The first of these two issues of Revolutionary Flag was from June 1977. And it's a particularly interesting example of Revolutionary Flag. In this issue of Revolutionary Flag, the party center awarded what they called the honorary red flag to three different districts within Democratic Kampuchea that the party center had judged were engaging in exemplary revolutionary behavior in terms of meeting the three tons per hectare production target and in upholding revolutionary principles. Those three districts were Prasat District, Tram Kok District, and Kampong Trelok District. These districts were put forth to the rest of the party as role models to be emulated. Following this relatively brief award, uh, award letter or announcement, there is a, a long essay that exhorts party members to search for and eliminate burrowing enemies by sweeping them away using, and I quote, absolute measures in a zero tolerance manner and without hesitation. This language was interpreted by cadres around the country as a signal to increase the intensity and the scope of purges. Moreover, this particular essay goes on to identify a likely source of enemies as being among the new people. In other words, uh, those people who had been evacuated from the cities 
in towns following the seizure of state power in April 1975. The second example, the special issue of revolutionary flag dated December 1977 to January 1978 in a similar way communicates the policies and goals of the Communist Party of Kampuchea to the members of the party. It's important to recall that this issue of revolutionary flag again came at a time of crisis in democratic Kampuchea because Vietnam was, during this period, engaged in an incursion, an armed incursion, into the territory of democratic Kampuchea that penetrated 20 kilometers or more along much of the two countries' shared border. This issue of the magazine exhorted the population and the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea to resist that armed incursion. And it also, interestingly, offered justifications and explanations for a number of policies of democratic Kampuchea that had become known to be unpopular among the masses, such as the forced evacuation of the cities, the appropriation of all policies, uh, all, all uh, property, that is, um, persecution of Cambodians of Vietnamese ethnicity, and the destruction of all classes but peasants and workers. This issue of revolutionary flag also has an extensive section describing why base people are superior to new people. Uh, in other words, why peasant classes are superior to the former urban classes. Thank you. Just one slight clarification. You mentioned in the first of those two documents that there were honorary red flag awards to three districts, and one of those districts you described as being Kampong Tralach. Earlier, in answer to questions from my national colleague, you mentioned that Duc had selected young boys from a Kampong Tralach district to serve with him at S21. Are they one and the same district, or are they two districts, from your understanding? The Kampong Trelok district mentioned in the 30 June 1977 issue of Revolutionary Flag is indeed the same Kampong Trelok district from which the accused person recruited young boys into the staff of S21. Qui travaillait ensuite au sein du personnel de S21. Est-ce qu'il serait possible. Judge Lavernier, would it be possible, please, to spell out the name of the district, please? Of course. Thank you, Your Honor. Bien sûr. K A M P O N G. New word. T R A L A C H. L A C H. Kampong Tala. 
just to complete Dr. Escherson, our discussion of the ways in which the Standing Committee communicated with its subordinate echelons. I'd like you please to discuss how individual Standing Committee members would travel to the zones to collect information and issue directives. And if you would please cast your attention to document 52 in your index. The minutes of the Standing Committee's visit to the Northwest Zone, August 20 to 24, 1975. <coughs> Yes, of course, Mr. Prosecutor. This is an unusual example of standing committee meeting minutes because rather than reporting on a single meeting that occurred on a particular day for some number of hours, this standing committee meeting minute reports on a field trip that the standing committee took to the northwest zone in August of 1975. It is unclear from the minutes on the face of it precisely which members of the Standing Committee participated in this field trip, but it describes the tour of the Standing Committee through a number of locations in the Northwest Zone, principally in and around the city of Batambang, and it reports on their discussions with Northwest Zone senior cadre. The conclusion generated by the Standing Committee from this visit is that there was a great deal, there was a great deal of fallow agricultural land in the Northwest Zone that could be exploited to produce rice. Consequently, according to this document, the Standing Committee decided that half a million people should be transferred to the Northwest Zone and put to work in agricultural, agricultural cooperatives growing rice in the Northwest Zone. A very short time later, our research has shown a massive transfer of population, primarily of new people who had previously been evacuated from Phnom Penh and other urban centers, were moved from the east zone, the central zone, and the southwest zone into the northwest zone where they were essentially zones, dumped on barren land in the middle of nowhere with no shelter, peu fertile, no food, sans abri, sans no clothing, sans nourriture, sans no habit, tools, sans outils, and told to grow rice. Et on leur a dit this was probably vous allez cultiver du riz. the single most disastrous policy decision taken in Democratic Kampuchea because with no means of support for this suddenly transferred population, those people began to starve, die of sickness, exposure and overwork by the tens of thousands. 
en conséquence de cette décision. Thank you. Donc, au We've spent a little time discussing Nous avons passé the different ways in which the Standing Committee communicated with the lower echelons. Le One final comment Un from you, Dr. Etchison, if you will, part, on this issue. Si vous Could you tell us, please, the question. overall prominence within de la, each mode of communication oh, of the political line on the smashing of enemies vis-à-vis -vis de l'écrasement de l'ennemi. J'espère que vous avez compris l'objet de ma question. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. La réponse. I think I understand. Effectivement, Monsieur le Procureur, je pense que j'ai compris l'objet de votre question. The Chamber and the parties la Chambre will find et les parties in this trouveront dans ce récapitulatif des documents and will find discussed throughout my report on the hierarchy of democratic Kampuchea s'agissant de la numerous examples of telegrams de nombreux exemples de télégrammes and reports et le rapport that were sent from the various zones Transmis to the party center zones vers le describing parties, developments in each of those zones. L'avancement des travaux dans chacune de ces zones. Typically, these reports covered security issues, economic production questions, issues, production économique and organizational development issues liés à au développement et l'organisation average example of such a report pour vous donner une idée there would be five pages of reporting devoted to the topic of internal enemies cinq pages cinq pages consacrées à l'ennemi interne à l'ennemi de l'intérieur et aux Perhaps mesures prises pour lutter contre cet ennemi de l'intérieur. Une page sur la production économique ou une demi-page et peut-être une demi-page euh, concernant le développement This pattern euh, repeats itself le développement in communications Donc ce from all zones to the party center. Il s'agit d'un modèle qui est And from an analytical point of view pour la communication entre les zones et le centre du parti. Ce qui suggère, à mon avis, que le parti centre était le plus intéressé dans le topic of the search for internal enemies. principal du centre du parti portait sur la chasse à l'ennemi de l'intérieur, beaucoup plus que l'économie et euh, le, euh, ce qui pouvait être fait pour le développement. Thank you, Dr. Etchison. In fact, you anticipated my next question, which was the communications the other way from the zones and the sectors and the districts and the other administrative and military units to the party center. And du centre du parti. I'd like to ask you if you could discuss the system of reporting in general terms de compte to the party center and perhaps if you can rely or refer to the document 37, the decision of the central committee regarding a number of matters concernant un ensemble from 30 de questions March 1976. Uh, and I stress this is specifically on the issue of and zones. Cette question porte essentiellement sur les méthodes de compte rendu. 
vers le centre. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. The statutes of the Communist Party of Kampuchea specifically require that each echelon of the party report regularly to its next superior echelon. In the document to which you refer, the 30 March 1976 decision of the Central Committee regarding a number of matters, uh, which I think we have mentioned the case file document number and ERN before and perhaps does not need to be restated at this point. In this document, the Standing Committee put a specific interval on that statutory reporting requirement when it describes a regime of weekly reporting to Office 870. And indeed, when you look through the documents that we have obtained, you can see patterns of weekly reporting from the zones to the center. And some of these reports from the zones to the center they also describe their own internal reporting regime. And in at least one instance I can recall, although I can't give you a specific citation off the top of my head, there is even an apology because at one echelon in the zone, the reporting is only happening at a 10-day interval rather than a one-week interval. Hebdomadaire, mais il n'a rendu compte de ses activités que euh, intervalle de 10 jours et s'en excuser spécifiquement. Thank you. Document, je pense. It Le would appear from what you have described, referring to the statutes of the party, that the general principle was communication should be to the immediately superior echelon. At paragraph 72 of your report, you describe how in some cases sectors communicated directly with the party center rather than communicating to the zones. And you say how this may have been particularly common for security matters. Could you explain for us why you reached this conclusion? Or how you reached this conclusion? Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. It appears from the documents we have obtained that although, as a general matter, communicating through channels was highly respected throughout the organization of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, however, it also appears that the party center the ultimate echelon of the party did not feel constrained to follow that organizational principle and instead they often reached down into the organization to obtain information or to issue specific policy directives and especially to affect issues of internal security, whether it be uh, gathering information about a particular individual, making changes 
and local leadership at the behest of the center or arranging purges. Thank you. I'd now like to move to a different topic concerning the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea. Are you able to help us, Dr. Etchison, with how many minutes of meetings survive from meetings convened by Son Sen, the chairman of the general staff, with all the secretaries and deputies of divisions and independent regiments. And perhaps you may refer to paragraph 118 of your report. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Procureur. I have previously referred in my testimony before this chamber to documents that are generally titled meetings of division commanders and deputy commanders and commanders of independent regiments. We have at least 13 examples of these kinds of meeting minutes which appear to have happened on a, a very frequent basis in some periods, as often as weekly, in which the senior leaders of the Revolutionary Army of Kampuchea would gather at the General Staff Headquarters, which I believe was synonymous with Son Sen's office, to report on the situation in their areas of operation and to receive instructions from Son Sen. Afin de recevoir les instructions et de recueillir les instructions de Son Sen. Thank you. Could I also ask you Question. perhaps to discuss aussi que vous décriviez pour the nous meetings that were convened qui se by Son Sen à de Son with Sen. selected secretaries Avec and deputies of divisions and independent regiments and discuss the reasons for such selective discussions. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. It appears from various documents oui, il ressort de plusieurs we have documents obtained nous avons that it was common in conjunction with these larger general staff meetings that would bring in the leadership of all of the center's divisions to the general staff de et de that Son Sen, Son Sen would also organize meetings with the senior staff of individual divisions or independent regiments in order to describe various particular policies that he wished to carry out or implement in specific regions. These meetings with individual division leadership cadres often appeared to be concerned strictly with security matters rather than a, the broader range of topics that was covered in the general staff meetings, including security, economic production issues, and general policy issues.
Before I ask you to question. illustrate that, could I please ask you to discuss for us the nature of communications uh, within the military and whether, in general terms, it was always vertical to the superior echelon or whether there was horizontal communication between individual divisions or independent regiments, to your understanding. Yes, Mr. Prosecutor, as a general rule, throughout the administrative, political, and military apparatus of democratic Kampuchea, communication was strictly vertical and this was very ruthlessly enforced. For example, if the leaders of two adjacent sectors that were in separate zones had some issue they needed to discuss, instead of communicating directly horizontally between the two sector secretaries, instead they had to route their communications up through their own zone leadership and onward to the party center, so that in effect the party center was the central communications node for the entire organization, the central office telephone switch, if you will. This way, the party center was the only organ that knew what was happening everywhere in the country. Indeed, repeatedly, in S-21 confessions, admissions that people had communicated outside of that strict vertical hierarchy were treated as proof of treasonous intent. This vertical communications requirement was even more strictly enforced in the military echelons. Thank you. Question. I'd like you to discuss S21's place Merci. within this communications network dans ce réseau that you've de described que vous décrire. and refer you to one particular set of meetings, of minutes from a meeting um, to which you've already referred document number 75 in your index, which is a, a meeting of Comrade Tal, T-A-L, Division 290 and Division 170 on the 16th of September 1976. And I wonder, Mr. President, if we can perhaps uh, place on the screens the Khmer document um, that uh, my colleague Mr. Ford has or will have shortly on his television screen Monsieur and have Ford a section of it read out. Là, et nous aimerions qu'une partie de ce document soit lue. Look, that being, yeah, I do, uh, Mr. Guy my President, Co-Prosecutor, how long does it take for Monsieur you for the question that you are going to put to the expert regarding the document that needs to be shown on the screen? Thank you, Mr. President. I note the time also. Um, perhaps five minutes or so. Not long. Not long. 
President. The President. You can proceed, Vous and the IT sur, people can assist you with the showing of the computer screen on the general screen. Thank you. Mr. President, if you could invite the AV unit to transfer the general screen to our screen on the front bench here, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je crois qu'il faut que les techniciens fassent apparaître l'image sur le bon écran. Mr. President, the audiovisual unit, could you assist with this uh, technicality? Est-ce que les services audiovisuels peuvent nous aider? Est-ce qu'on peut avoir la, la note de bas de page, s'il vous plaît, de Mr. ce Hope, could we have the dans le rapport de M. Chesson Il y a besoin de la report. note de bas de page. I would need the footnote number. Pour savoir si ça figure bien dans son rapport. So that I can Et M. Chesson doit le savoir, je pense. Is in his report. If the defense will bear with us one moment. Yes, it's uh, footnote 283. So if uh, I can invite Mr. Ford to go back to the English document. Mr. Ford va maintenant afficher le document voulu. If you would scroll to the top of the page just to confirm the document, I'll do it very briefly in English, and then perhaps it can be done in Khmer. This is a document, the 16th of September, 1976. Minutes of the meeting with Comrade Tal, Division 290 and Division 170. And scrolling down the page, the section that is highlighted in a box, I'll read it slowly. Comrade Doik had a view. After a meeting, non, non, mon confrère, s'il vous plaît. Excusez-moi, si on doit lire leave, un document, please, on lit l'original, pas la traduction. If you want to read a document, you read the original, not the translation. If you please. Non, non. Je souhaite que on, cette note, je suppose, existe en Khmer. I imagine that this note exists in the Khmer. Il est normal que l'on donne une lecture en Khmer, pas une traduction. For this note to have been written in Khmer, not we don't want a translation. Very well. In Khmer it will be. If I can invite uh, the President to direct the greffier to commence reading in the Khmer document where it says Comrade Doik had a view and all the way down until Little number two, just above where it says operational method. Jusqu'au numéro deux, où il est question des méthodes opérationnelles. I'm sorry, Mr. President, we don't need the, the names in the box read out. Il pas besoin we just need the text that is highlighted. Thank you. Text.
Which section do you want to be read out, says the president? It means the point two in the box accepts the names. Is that correct? Perhaps, Mr. President, it would be simpler if everything in the red box is read out. That way there is no confusion. The president, the greffier. The president, greffier. Sir Colbotti, can you read the text in the red box? Read the complete text in the red box. Intégralement. The greffier, Comrade Dutch, head of you. After a meeting, Comrade Zok and Comrade Tat of Division 170 were in unity that it was necessary to propose getting another 29 names, that is, Kurt Bain, Lane, Typist, True, Tactilograph, Pat-Sin, Logistic, 3, Taung Sa Pai, 4, So Son, 5, Kham Yan, Yan, six, six. Nguyen Tu, Nguyen Tu, seven, seven. No Pon, No Pon, eight, eight. Kiu Sat, Kiu Sat, nine, nine. Yuk Sang, Yuk Sang, ten, ten. Aim Sat, Aim Sat, eleven, eleven. Wood some ale, wood some ale, twelve, douze, pan ping, pan thirteen, treize, green, green, fourteen, quatorze, ung son, ung son, fifteen, quinze, sok kai, sok kai, sixteen, seize, kain ngon, kain ngon, seventeen, dix-sept, tet samen, tet samen, eighteen, dix-huit, samet, samet, nineteen, dix-neuf, kong sun, kong sun, twenty, vingt, Kai Eun, twenty-one. Long Saret, twenty-two. Kai Sok, twenty-three. Chan Kun, twenty-four. Kong Saret, twenty-five. Ki Sopat, twenty-six. Sok Pe, twenty-seven. Sen Song, twenty-eight. Put Sokon, twenty-nine. Prat Poli. This name suggested by S21 and Division 170. Besides the eleven persons who were decided on the 15th of September. One. Based on the reasoning made clear by S21 and the division, which have seen concrete and conditions continuous activities, and based on the principles stipulated by the organizations that Chris links must be taken, the meeting agreed to decide to take these 29 more. Thank you, Madame Greffier. If you could then read, with the President's direction, the next next box in red, the short passage there. Thank you. Un court passage. Si le président y agrée. The President, the Greffier, can you read the text in the red box as indicated by the co-prosecutor? It is imperative to act in accordance with our experiences in having previously taken these guys again and again. Do, do it so as not to cause disruption in the unit and organization. Grasp the unit of organization firmly in hand. And do well in maintaining secrecy. Concretely consult and discuss with S21 as regards operational methods for taking them and making assignments to administer the unit or organization while these guys are being removed.
And finally, the third and final box highlighted in red, Mr. President, if you could direct the greffier to read that few lines there. Thank you. The President, uh, the greffier, you may continue reading the next box. The greffier. One. La greffière. Division two ninety S twenty one and the division S21 must et les divisions doivent cooperate coopérer and seize right from the motor pool. Two. De Division 170, S21 and the division must consult about the details of the concrete measures to take all 40. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I have uh, one last question. Excuse me, Mr. Problem de traduction uh, um, I apologize, there's a translation problem again, assez important. which seems to me, to me rather important. Sur la traduction I have qui a here on, uh, in the translation that was given to me la regarding the 280th division, S21 S21 division and the division collaborer. must collaborate, that's what is stated, la greffière and là. the Greffier stopped here, whereas in my translation it's written that they must collaborate sur place to arrest these members en on site and to transport que them by car. Does this text ou exist ou exist pas? or does this te text does not, uh, pas uh, été lu, not exist? Pas traduit dans mes or oreilles. in any case it was not read or was not translated. I did not hear the translation. Si uh, can we please re-verify the translation? Uh, what I heard was concerning uh, the 290th division, S21 and the division must collaborate, nothing more. That's pas all I got in my headphones. I didn't hear anything about arresting and transporting by uh, car. Si just, I just would like to verify if this is not, if this is included or not. Que on peut uh, can we please therefore ask um, greffière the greffier to reread uh, the two last paragraphs, please? President. Mr. President, is that possible? And the president, yes, it can be done. Graphier, can you read point, point one and point two again in the red box in order to make it clear? The Graphier one. Division 290, S21, S21 and the division must cooperate and seize right from the motor pool. True. Division 170, S21, and the division must consult about the details of the concrete measures to take all 40. I apologize, the interpreter cannot hear. Yes, now it's okay. document français, s'il vous plaît? Alors, Mr. La cote, je, Monsieur well, le Président, je donne Mr. pour l'interprétation la cote ERN du document français, That's the French document, Mais ce qui m'intéresse, ce n'est pas seulement de savoir ce qui a été traduit en français, ce qui m'intéresse, c'est de savoir si la traduction française est conforme à l'original. C'est ça mon problème. That is my concern. Donc il faut Therefore, bien repartir de l'original et juste m'indiquer que si dans l'original on parle en effet de voiture, d'arrêter les membres et de les amener en voiture. C'est seulement ma question. Monsieur le Président, can we take, please, the original document? And I really note the timing of the interventions just when we are discussing key evidence. And this is what I really object to. The President, the co-prosecutor, you can continue. 
the president. Based on the original document, it is uh, sufficient. And the wordings, although I do not speak French, but it has the word voiture, so it seems clear to me. Thank you, Mr. President. My final question to the witness for the week. Dr. Edgerson, here we have had read out for us minutes of meetings of a meeting describing S20, how S21 has met with divisions, has discussed and identified prisoners, and has deliberated and collaborated on methods of arrest. Can you tell us, please, how that fits in to the general picture you described of vertical communications within the military? Yes, Mr. Prosecutor. According to this document, Another person attending this meeting was Son Sen, il y avait aussi à cette réunion, Son Sen, who was the deputy prime minister Son Sen, qui était le for national defense, pour les affaires de défense, the chief of the general staff, chef de l'état-major, and a member of the party center ainsi que membre du military committee. Et du comité militaire. Thus, The accused person Donc, liaised upward to the very apex of authority au sommet de la in the Communist Party of Kampuchea, Parti du Kampuchea and then reached down through Son Sen into operating divisions to assist division in the planning and conduct of what became a very large scale purge qui, uh, in the military très connected with dans the affair of Shan Chakra. En rapport avec de Shang Chakra. Just to clarify, the procureur, une précision. in your expert opinion, does this document Give permission que vous from the center ce document that units can au centre, contact each other, or that S21 can contact each other, autorise, or how would you describe what we have read? Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, it seems clear to me, Mr. Prosecutor, that this operation is being carried out on the direct authority of the party center, authorizing such communications between S21 and the targeted units that are necessary to implement the plan purge. Mr. President, I apologize for straying a little over my five minutes, but I hope it was important to finish the topic before we rise. Thank you. The President. President. The audio and visual unit, you can turn the screen to the normal view. On peut faire apparaître l'image normale à l'écran. And now, since it's time for the adjournment, l'heure est venue de lever l'audience. The trial chamber would like to thank Dr. Greg Edison for your time and patience in providing your testimony before this chamber. It is, in fact, according to the proceedings, it is not yet uh, finished. It's going Votre to continue. Pas pour autant. And actually, we have the schedule for Monday and Tuesday for another expert to provide testimony. Il est prévu qu'un autre expert vienne déposer.
the president. Because uh, of the scheduling of the hearing, as another expert, which we have prévu, already announced to the parties, annoncé la venue d'un autre expert, because it is necessary for him to provide the testimony since he has Vous other engagements. Engagement he only can make it on the 25th and the 26th. Therefore, for the continuation of the testimony of Dr. Craig Edgerson, and since you are present in Etat Cambodia Etat right here, Etat right Etat now, we will find an appropriate Etat time to continue Etat your testimony. However, for ultérieur. next week hearing, in the early week, we will have a testimony Et of an expert who only has two days to be present here in Cambodia for our court hearing. Pour venir ici. So for you, uh, Dr. Gregerson, the chamber will inform you of the nous appropriate time donc de la date à laquelle vous aurez encore à comparaître. in order to invite you to provide your testimony. Pour poursuivre votre but we haven't yet had a schedule for your next testimony. Mais il nous est pas And the chamber de announced the adjournments of today's hearing. The security terme, je official you take the accused back to the detention facility de and bring him back et de le on the morning of the 25th before 9 a.m. Concerned parties and the court official, could you arrange or facilitate the experts to return to Je his place of residence?